Welcome. I'm Lisa Tenner, and I'm here today with Dr. Kathy Kim, whom I met at Harvard Medical School's CMA publishing course uh, several years ago. And I was just fascinated by the work she does. And as I got to apply it in my own life, even more fascinated. And it's helped me as a writer. So I look forward to sharing it with all of you today. After more than two decades in primary care as a board certified family medicine physician, Dr. Kim transitioned to the world of functional medicine, and she's now a consultant as a body function specialist. She helps patients recognize how imbalances in their diet and musculature are the root cause of their symptoms and educates them on how to heal themselves with awareness and mindful movement. So welcome, Dr. Kim. It's so wonderful to be here with you today. Oh, it's great to see you and be with you also. This is a wonderful chance. Thanks. Well, as a writer, we spend a lot of our time sitting in front of a computer or maybe sitting elsewhere and reading, but just lots and lots of time sitting. And you've helped me watching your videos has been so instrumental in helping relieve back pain, neck pain, headache, and foot pain. And so I'm really excited today to share that it's not just, you know, your back that might be impacted by all this sitting, but really your whole body. And uh, maybe do you want to start with sort of how you got into this work and making these connections? Because it's, it's not really part of your formal training for medical school, right? Right, definitely not. Of course, we cut right through the connective tissue layer to get to the important stuff, to get to the muscles, uh, the nerves, arteries, veins that we were uh, trained to uh, learn in anatomy. And it turns out that this layer that's covering everything, the fascial layer, is the one that's the the one that's um, unifying the whole body in all of its systems, which I hadn't recognized, of course, because this is not the way we were trained decades ago, maybe even now. I had broken my wrist and after it was healed is when I suffered a lot with uh, nerve pain in my neck and my hand. And um, I knew that it was after the bone had healed. So what could that be except for something that I couldn't see? Uh, mm -hmm. I took that opportunity then to um, pursue chiropractic, acupuncture, um, a holistic kind of physical therapy approach. And my eyes were open to how my hip was actually the cause or one of the causes of the pain that I was having up here. And then I would see patients with similar symptoms to what I had. I wow. would say, well, let me try a little bit of this on you because uh, uh, I was seeing how the mechanics was changing their symptoms, not taking the medicine you know, because I could see how the mechanics would actually get them out of their plight. My eyes got more and more um, opened or aware of, of what else was going on that I had been missing for all of these uh, decades, years of practicing. So it was the fascia, the connective tissue that was really ca causing these imbalances that created pain in all kinds of areas of the body. Is that right? Yeah. So that was just amazing that it was, you know, because everyone blithely says, oh, it's all connected. So we kind of jump from this segmented way that the body is um, made with the um, different joints and then seeing different specialists, GI and neurology. And so we jump from that to this, then we go immediately to this abstract. There's a big uh, leap to, uh, to, this, to this psychiatric kind of meta level where yes, the stress up here, trauma up here will manifest as body symptoms. So we have like this huge gray zone in the middle where it, it, the practicality of understanding how distant, uh, geographically distant areas in your body can actually affect the function, not just the, just the pain, but the function of an area farther away. There's a big gray zone in there. And that, I, uh, that is where I now operate. I'm like the gray area physician. So let's, let's go to that, that 
thing that writers are doing all the time, right? We're sitting at a computer and you, you really helped me identify, you know, kind of what was going on in my body when I'm sitting and particularly when I'm getting into and out of my seat, that that's actually the point of the most impact and where we can have an immediate impact. I was so amazed how quickly I could feel better and lighter. And when, when uh, we first, uh, I guess the second time we met, when, when you sort of demonstrated for me what's going on, uh, you know, I, I was really tired. I was really dragging and my body felt really uncomfortable and heavy. And since that time, I have not felt that way again. And uh, that was just, you know, really from focusing on that, getting into and out of a chair. So can, can you tell us why even more than sitting itself, getting into and out of the chair has such a negative impact the way we usually do it? So that is fabulous. I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. What I think is happening, if you think of yourself as wearing a costume, like a Spider-Man costume that's too small, or a, one that many of us can relate to is back in the day when we wore jeans that had no spandex in them and we wore them out of the dryer. That was really, uh, put them on out of the dryer. That was kind of a difficult uh, process, right? So if you remember putting on these jeans that, and that kind of represents what's happening to our fascia, uh, the covering of our muscles. If you remember that actually the most uncomfortable position to be in, and that's the one you use to stretch out the jeans, was to be sitting or squatting. It would cut behind your knee and you would feel it in your tush, you know, so in around your waist. So these, these showed that this was the most difficult. Actually, this is the one that challenged the jeans the most. So I think people feel that sitting is actually the problem, but I think sitting actually stretches a lot of things on the, on your outside of your body. And so what happens is that you think sitting's bad because when you get up, you don't feel good. Or after a while of sitting, you don't feel so good. But what's happening when you're sitting is that your body is doing this kind of zone defense borrow from Peter to pay Paul situation. How about getting into and out of a chair? Because that is actually worse than the sitting piece itself, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So right. why so is what, that? Yes. So I to explain that, I say to people, okay, if you if you were um, a, a, a elderly person in church or you watch someone elderly or weak in church or a function and you see them sitting and standing they when they're sitting already they don't need a lot of assistance and when they're standing they don't need assistance most of them the time everyone needs assistance when they're getting weaker or having some kind of a health issue is the transition from sitting to standing or standing to sitting which is that's when you're recruiting the all the muscles and you need the balance and to do all that. So I focus on doing that, um, changing that for people because that is what develops your muscle strength and the habits and the, um, and the movements that are demanding that your fascia adapt. It, it's not doing as much when you're already sitting or mm -hmm. already standing. Does that make sense for why I focus on it to stand? It, stand it does. It does. And I think in your videos, you even kind of give us a, some like really rough physics equations, right? So we can see it's something like two full tons of pressure force that's that's on our body during the course of a day from just getting into and out of our chair, right? I feel that what's happening in modern society now, is that our, because we're so technologized and we're insulated, when you see people go back to homesteading or more off the grid living, they're paying attention to the sun and the weather. And, and I realized when we lived off the land, we would have to notice migration patterns, whether it's a good time to hunt, whether that day was going to be rainy or not, because if you're going to do laundry, what's the point of hanging up your clothes, right? So we had all this um, awareness of our environment that we had, that those are kind of attribute too. And that extends also to our 
our unawareness of ourselves and the physics of how we how we move. Um, I say that gravity spares no one, and somehow we're uh, the less grounded we are, we're kind of a little bit um, uh, unrealistic about whether or not gravity would affect us the same as <laughs> other objects. <laughs> that is so true. And I, I love how what you're saying now, too, is, is a lesson for us as writers. So I'm going to take a pause and just say, you know, it's so true how we've lost touch often with our environment. And as we pay more attention, not only do we get more comfortable in our body and feel less pain, but, but we'll be better writers, too. So I love that distinction. Oh, yeah. Um, that all, I tell people all this sensing will this improves your relationships it's just more awareness this is what we're we would we want to evolve into being more aware not mm -hmm. less aware. yeah and um so and it'll be it'll be rich like regenerative agriculture regenerative agriculture you just plow it back in and it'll come back and give you more beautiful i i love all the metaphors kathy kathy because one of the things that's so important is getting into and out of a chair. Uh, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your videos, because I think they do such a great job of teaching us how to do that, why it's important as well, but, but really showing us what's going on and what to do to get into and out of a chair so that we're not feeling pain in our heads or our feet or our neck or anywhere because of this activity that we repeat so much in our day as a writer. Sure. Um, I will say that um, what happens when you, what happens about this standing and the sitting, first I'll back up a little bit and say that I think when you look at us like evolutionarily, uh, I was, I, I thought, why are we having this problem? Why do so many of us have this problem? And I, I realized that this idea of sitting in these chairs and um, and modern toilets, for instance, these are all modern day ideas. This is not how we actually uh, evolved. And what do we lose when that happens? So when I compared what happens between when people don't use chairs and um, and have to use their own bodies to sit, I thought, gosh, the mechanics of that are completely different. And so I, I am not expecting people to go to squatting the way you would we have done in um, our evolutionary history. What I want to do is use those principles and just incorporate them into using modern chairs. And it turns out for most of my most all of the patients that I work with, um, they they get the benefit. You still get the benefit of doing that. And so when people will say, well, how many squats should I do? Or how long should I sit down there? I say, that is not where it is. Let us just do the change the sit and stand the way I suggest. And I direct them to my videos because it's a kind of visual to see how that works. Yeah. And these videos are free there. Uh, if you go to Dr. Kathy Kim on YouTube, you'll find her videos and they, they're, they're fairly short. I would say for what, you know, the amount of material you cover, they're just very clear. They have fantastic drawings and uh, some wonderful metaphors, which I love. So uh, I would direct everyone, you know, just check out these videos. They have really changed my life and my body and I can't recommend it enough. And like I said, it's, fr it's a free resource. So I hope people will do that. So we'll all save a lot of money and time just by doing what you teach us in these videos throughout yeah. the things we do in our life. Uh, and it'll be so much more effective, right? Than like going to the gym, but then coming home and doing our sitting and standing all wrong. Oh, that's so true. Why spend them this time making your squats perfect at the gym when you sit and stand a hundred times a day in a way where you're just turned off. You don't even pay attention to that. I, the, so you can see how it doesn't make a lot of sense. Make life your gym, which is make life your um, like everything instead of I only do this here and I only do this here. If it's you, if you're like true dyed color all throughout, it, it'll be there everywhere.
and it won't be extra work. Yeah, it, it reminds me of a phrase that I've heard you say, and I know you coined this, the fountain of youth is in your thighs. I just love that. <laughs> and it's yeah, true. Well, I have prescribed many raised toilet seats for someone when they're elderly and they can't get down to a regular toilet. So mm -hmm. what is that? That shows that they're too stiff in there to to actually lower to what, something that's already been raised for us from, I don't know, 16th century at least. Come on, let's foam roll. The fountain of youth is in your thighs. Use those heels. Listen to me, get that butt back. So you mentioned foam roll. That's one of the pieces of homework you give people and it's something that we can discover on those videos. But do you wanna say a little bit about, about the foam rolling? Sure. Um, when I first did it, this is several years ago, I thought, how could, how could I ever do it in a way that doesn't hurt? I thought, how does that hurt so bad? Then what is happening when I go and walk and walk upstairs, do yoga, run? Like, why doesn't it hurt when I do that? Which is how I came to be thinking about this idea of paying, uh, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul or this zone defense kind of situation where your body's always borrowing from someone else. I thought that must be what's happening is that you're getting the movement done, but you're just, you know, uh, pulling on another area to, to be able to borrow that flexibility. Right. So, so when you I, say borrowing from someone else, you, you mean like one muscle is, is kind of using, it's not working well and it's so a different muscle is having to do the work. Yeah. Is that accurate? Well, right. Or a group of muscles where the fascia is mm -hmm. covering, they kind of work together as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And they, they kind of, and then when they're pulling like that and they can't do it, your body's a little adaptable. So you might arch your back a little and help your other other part of your body to help with the flexibility. So I saw that the foam rolling was important for improving the flexibility of this very important section of the body that we need. I tell people, you're only as flexible as your stiffest player. It might be more painful, but it's way more effective. So, right, so right. The, the, the uh, benefit that you're getting is so much greater. Absolutely. The reason it's so painful is apparently fascia has more pain receptors than your skin. So wow. I'm so sensitive and challenging to work on it. And if you can just mentally understand that all your, when it's all this tight and then it's not really moving and when you're pushing on it, it's separating it. And actually I tell people it's like natural body lift. It's taking mm -hmm. your body back through time. Wow. Wow. That's really something. I remember you're showing me some photographs of here's a child and, you know, here's, here's how she's standing. And so, you know, here's an older woman and that's where that child is going just by the way she's standing. So it, it's, it really is a way to, to, like you said, turn back the clock and achieve a level of youthfulness and vitality. And, and I think that's a really important distinction too. It's not just like letting go of the pain that you've been feeling and the discomfort, but what I found is there's a vitality. It's like the body has a certain vitality, but when it's tight in all these places, we're not really accessing that vitality. And I know as a creative person, and we're all creative at some level, but as writers, you know, our vitality can only help us uh, to, to be more vital in every activity, inc including our writing. Even though it's a mental activity, I know the more relaxed my body is, uh, the easier it is to get in that state of creative flow. So, it, you know, this really does all come back to a, a foundation that, you know, we're not writing outside of our bodies. We're in our body when we're writing. And so it's important to realize that all the activities that we do with our body are influencing both the joy we can experience when we're writing and the, and the effectiveness to the creativity that flows. So that that is, is, yeah, sorry. Really points. Yes. About that. Could I mention something about that, about you when you're, um, I tell people who say that they don't have time. They're so busy thinking they ha don't have time. And I, and to, 
think about the transitions, which you have completely mm -hmm. committed to paying attention to. And I say to them, you know what? Um, notice how much pain intrudes on your life. Like it changes. You won't do certain things because it's going to hurt. You think twice before you're going to bend and reach for that thing because it's going to hurt. And while you're working, you're actually part of you is distracted by the pain. So how mm -hmm. about instead of the pain intruding on you, you decide you're going to do this and you're going to. So it's probably net net maybe the same amount of time spent thinking about it. But now by by you making these changes, the pain then would would subside a little and it's the same amount of of um, mental energy not the same quality but a similar kind of a mental energy and then you're more free you're not you're not inside a suit of armor that's rusting and getting restricted you've oiled it up and it can move and now mentally and in every way you're more free that's that's really summarizes it so beautifully so is there anything you'd like to add to uh help enlighten our listeners I would say that just like anything's possible up there in your creative brain, beyond your belief, your body could heal if it's not forced to fight gravity in ways that are just impossible to fight. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is fantastic. So um, you have these wonderful videos on YouTube. They're a free resource and so powerful. It really is a course in how to move in your body to to create a more vital and enjoyable experience just living and and writing and sitting and all the things we do uh so that's dr kathy kim on youtube how else can people get in touch with you well they could also look at my website which is the same name drkathykim.com where i explain a little bit more about my background. It has these articles that I have written. And you're working on a book. So if, if people are interested, I think this book is going to, you know, change all our lives. I have, I have one book that I um, really helped me during, I used to get um, sciatica and especially when I was in the car a long period of time. And that book is called Live Pain Free by Lee Albert. And that like became a Bible and I gave it to friends when they got pregnant. And I, and I know your book is going to be a similar book that just changes people's lives and gets them out of pain. Uh, and so I, I'm sure that people want to get on your mailing list and I encourage people go to Kathy's, Kathy's website and get on her mailing list, follow her on social media, because when this book comes out, it's something that you're going to want to have and probably give to others. I know that other book I gave to a lot of people because it helped me so much. This is that kind of book. So it's not written yet, but um, but prepare for it. Make sure you're on the list because you are going to want to read it and share it. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure to speak with you. And I'm so excited to share this information with everyone. Well, thank you for having me, Lisa. And it's always a pleasure to talk and learn with you.